It's real with Jordan and Demi. I'm here with Carter Vale in LA. How you doing, Carter? I'm good. Thanks so much for having me. Of course. And in Santa, beautiful Santa Barbara, California, Demi Ramos with her green drink because <laughs> she's in California. And when you're in California, you got to drink something green. It's the rule. True. Yes. Before the show, we were just talking about um, Carter's uh, martial arts prowess. Oh, gosh. Yeah. I, I don't know if I'd call it prowess. I'm still still not very good at it. So but. let me ask you something, uh, Carter. If, if say, you were assaulted, you were walking home one night here in dangerous Silver Lake, um, and someone grabbed you from behind uh -huh. and was like, give me your money, could you take them? What would be your reaction? It, it very much depends on who is grabbing me from behind. But you don't, you don't, so you don't have the I think, instinct of like a, like a, I think, I think statistically, unless they had like a knife, I'd be pretty good. Um, but you know, maybe it's like, maybe it's Dave Batista coming at me. And in that case, probably okay. not. Okay. I, but you know, I, I like my chances right now. I like my chances. See, I, uh, I, I kind of have this, like, have, you, you know, Demi has talked about, um, you know, she doesn't know any karate to my knowledge, but, but she's told me stories about walking home from school in New York and with her like keys between her knuckles as like a backup plan in case something happens. Right. So actually a pencil, a pencil. Oh, even oh, better. Shit. We feel very safe. So you never had to use it though. Did you never used it? No, but I think just it just gave me a confidence to just like walk in the streets alone. So I think that's, that was the, like the value of it. You know what I mean? Did you, did you sharpen the pencil beforehand? No, I never had sharpened pencils. That's the it'd thing. Be, it'd be much better I was that kid in school. Never, yeah. never sharpened it. I would go and sharpen it. You know, when you would go and walk to like the end of the classroom and you'd like go and sharpen your pencil and then you'd yeah, like yeah. show off your outfit. And it was always the kids with like the, you want to show off your fit. Your new sneakers. Yeah, you got those new sneakers on, you got to go with pencil sharpener. What kind of like kid were you in school, Carter? What kind of kid was I? Yeah, what um, kind of kid were you? What crew were you in? I think I was like deeply afraid of breaking the rules. I was I was a pretty good kid throughout, I think. I was a a good student and yeah, I, you seem like a kind soul. Like you I like to think I am. You seem like the kind of guy who would who would like be polite and say thank you to your teacher and I would I would definitely I definitely said thank you to my teachers. I, th I think your I was parents, like... Your parents brought you up correctly, yeah. yeah. I, I like to think so. I, but I also feel like I have such a weird thing with like authority of just being... like. I think I'm in intimidated by authority. I am too. I'm the kind of guy that if I'm driving down the road perfectly, legally, like yeah. going to speed limit and I see a cop behind him, I'm like, oh fuck, don't pull me over. Yeah, yeah. Don't pull me over. I'm going like 28 miles an hour. Yeah. And I feel like, the same way. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm fucked. And I'm white. Are we allowed to are we allowed to yeah. swear on this? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I always think when I pass cops, I'm like, I'm screwed. This is it. <laughs> this is it. It's all over. So you're you know for these funny little songs, 30 seconds, a minute long. Yeah. But you're coming out with a serious, real, legit grown up album. Yeah. I'm uh I love making the the short, funny songs because you know it takes so little time to make them. The way I usually do it is like I'll come up with an idea in the morning and then by 2 p.m. the song will come out. That's Sorry? the quickest turnaround I've ever heard. Yeah, even yeah. for a 30 second song, that's like. Yeah, it's fast. Yeah. But like that's, it, it's so low stakes that like, you know, people are listening to it on their phone speaker. So it doesn't have to sound all that good. It's more about the idea and, and like how much fun you're having while making. When was that aha moment where you wanted to, you know, hone in on your artistry and make something like a body of work? I have been making like the serious music for longer than I've been doing the, um, uh, the the joke songs. The thing is, the the people on the internet love a short joke song, so that's the stuff that's gotten popular. But like, I've been putting out long form music for probably the last eight years. Um, so yeah, that's I think that was my like first my first real love. I'm not sure where I read this, but somewhere for Carter that I read was um that you produce write record and play jujitsu right yeah yeah if you had to pick one of those what would they be Ooh, i think writing music would be the most important thing to me and why because if i still write music then someone else could produce it and someone else could mix it and and all that but it's like, out of your hands it's yeah but 
I mean, I love all the parts of it, but the thing that like matters the most to me is writing music. Like that's, that's, that's the key to all of it. I think. That's pretty cool. So you're also a musician. Yeah. 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 What, what's, what, what sort of music do you make? I was playing in a punk band for a few years and then I decided that I loved like the process of collaborating with different producers and stuff like that. So I kind of went off into like my own thing and I'm now making my own kind of like solo body of work, which is really interesting because I feel like, like uh, projects kind of mark or stamp a moment in time. So it's kind of cool when you, you can look back at like a Frank Ocean album and say, wow, like that was like his vibe for that year, let's say, or however long that he was making it. So that's why I ask you about when you're making a body of work, like, like what kind of vibe are you in right now? Like what's that, what's that body going to reflect? I think when I'm making like records, the thing that matters, the the, or the, the like inspiration for each one is typically a like character I'm playing in that record. And so for this one, it's called a hundred cowboys. It's already out in this, in when this is, being Mm. released um and yeah it's just i'm kind of doing this whole cowboy thing not that it's necessarily a country record but like that's the inspiration behind it is like what is cowboy and what is what is not cowboy but then the previous record was like interstellar tennis championship and i was doing like a weird astronaut you did like 80 with the headband on i remember you did like 80s like kind of aerobic looking exactly yeah and i think the combination of like the yeah the 80s workout gear plus um like astronaut was just like it, it was really inspiring to me and so for this this one's gonna be cowboy and next one i don't know what it's gonna be it's gonna be another weird fucking character but we'll see what happens yeah so you're into westerns like- i'm i am a little bit i'm getting more into them i i'm not a huge like movie buff or anything but i, yeah. I my uh my girlfriend's big into to film mm-hmm. and so i need to brush up on my westerns brush up um i'm gonna recommend uh the cowboys starring john wayne uh it was one of the very few it was it's more it's late 60s it's more violent than some of the other ones but it's basically he takes a bunch of like orphaned teenage boys and makes them into like a group of cowboys and they go out and like I, I'm sure they like stop a bandit or something like that, but it's basically like, that. yeah, but it's, it's a good, like, it's, it's sort of like a John Wayne Western, but it's a little more modern. So I love that. That's my recommendation for everyone out there. I, th- uh, I think my, my personal fave is Tombstone. Tombstone. Okay. Tombstone's fucking Tombstone sick. over Wyatt Earp. Cause they yeah. came out at the same time. Oh uh, yeah. And it's the same yeah. story or yeah. Yeah. Just different. I think, I don't know if I've seen that one. Yeah. Well, yeah. one was, was Tombstone's the one, with uh kurt russell right? yes yes okay and the mustaches in that yeah. shit oh my god let's if I talk could, about your mustache it's don't get too close to it because it's it's not very full but i wish if i could like get a big one that curls up and everything oh my god have you seen those like barbershop tiktoks where the guys do like the spray paint to fill in the uh i'm just thinking about this the, the this thing yeah a good oh mustache yeah curl. have you thought about doing like a like a like a like a 19th century villain kind yeah. of yeah Yes, you know. I've, if I could, if I could get like a mustache that was long and thicker, it would like be a curling, Raleigh fingers. It would be curling. Are you familiar with Raleigh fingers? No, but that name just like it. It sounds like that guy has a mustache. He has a he has an amazing till to this day. He's like you know he, but he's an Oakland A's great. He's one of the uh, best relief pitchers of all time. Oh, okay, but yeah, he was in the seventies when everyone had mustaches. Yeah. Can yeah. you guys like describe to me because I feel like each like for men like facial hair is a very facial hair is like what makeup is to women. It's what it's all we got. Can you guys explain to me like the gist on like facial hair and how you guys decide what like style you're going with? I think for me, I got dumped and then I was like, I guess I have a mustache now. Oh it, my God. I have a friend with the same thing. Really? That you grew like a uh, like a like a breakup mustache. Yeah, and that was a year ago, and I've just had a mustache for a year now, and I love it. Now when I see pictures of myself like without one, I'm like, that's weird, but I I I love it. Yeah, and I always like I, I always stroke it when I'm thinking. Yeah, and that's and you look really smart when you do that too. I go, you don't have a twirl. Mm, yeah. See, I um, my my beard is so thick that if I don't shave in like a week, it's like. Yeah. You know, so and yours fully connects and everything. That's yeah. Yeah, that's the I, shit. Mine I, doesn't. Not about. I, you know what? I, 
I'm just not a tough guy. guy. And I think that's part of it. But like, but if growing I was, the beard immediately, immediately you're a tough guy. So the beard. yeah, I, th- I think to some extent Definitely. I used to have, when I first met Demi, you know, five or six years ago, I had a big bushy beard. I had like a big bushy beard. Um, I'll throw that picture up right now, right now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, so I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I like a stubble. I'm a stubble guy. Yeah. But here's the thing. My mom watches this show and she's always on me when I call her. She's like, you need to clean. Sh- you look better clean shaven. She's always dissing my beard. My mom is. I-, I think it's just so in right now to have like any facial hair. If I could go. See, I, I feel like it was more beard. in 10 years ago to have facial hair than it Maybe, is now. Well, you know, I think mustaches are dramatically more. Oh, absolutely. More and you can do them unironically now. Exactly. Yeah, like yeah. Paul Skeens. Are you a baseball fan? No. Okay. Paul Skeens is like the biggest, hottest pitch uh, rookie pitcher this year. Yeah, okay. The Pirates, and he has like a, he has kind of an unimpressive mustache. Okay. But he's uh, he's dating Livy Dunn, so he doesn't care. Speaking of that, what do you guys think about the term influencer? I think like influencers, like there's there's the real influencers, right? That like take pictures for the purpose of selling product and for the purpose yeah. of like growing their online right. presence and then there's like these multifaceted like creatives that people like will label like mistakenly as influencers which i think is incorrect right what do you think about that carter the term influencer and have you been called an influencer before i i think um carter's I, influenced me oh yeah <laughs> into growing a mustache, <laughs> growing a mustache. <laughs> i think um i've been called an influencer but every time i've been called it it's been like derisively <laughs> People are like, ah, you're an influencer. I don't think of myself like that at all. I don't think I have any influence on people, but I do think of myself as a content creator because I create a whole lot of content. I'm a, I think of myself as a musician. And then when people say, oh, you're a content creator, I'm like, yeah, I guess so. When people say influencer, I'm like, nah, I don't, I don't think I have any influence. On I think it just became anyone. a catch all with anyone who yeah. like does promoted posts. Yes. And let's, let's talk about your, uh, following. Um, so you, you've always had, I followed you for a couple of years now. Oh, hell yeah. Um, and you always had a, a healthy following, but the last six or eight months or so you yeah. really, you've gotten some champagne poppy numbers going. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so what, what, what changed for you? What made, what made you like, what, what, like What's opened changed? up the doors. For um, the the big thing was I made this uh, funny song called Dirt Man, and it it just it fucking exploded. Truly, I thought it was like one of the dumbest things I've made. So, and I was like, people seem to like it, so I'm like, hey, so, fuck it, let's do it. So, what I here's my opinion about Dirt Man. Okay, it's funny. I like the Bossa Nova. Sure, but you've had funnier songs. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And so I'm like, why is this one? <laughs> I why don't is know. this one? It's not any. It, I think the one you you did one about like birds and how fucked up birds oh, yeah, are. Yeah, yeah, birds are perverts. Birds are perverts. It was yeah. like way better than. Dirt oh man. my god. Yeah. Yeah. I I also think that, but it's also like, so much of it is just timing, and you know, the, the more shit you throw at the wall, something's gonna stick. Yeah. Um, and that happened to be the one. The amount of I was so I was in New York last week, and the number of people that were shouting dirt at me, like in the subway and shit, was oh, crazy. Oh man. Yeah. Have you have you ever been recognized to that degree? Not to like, the not like it's it's I'm recognized much more now. Um and again, like it's not it's not like that much, but for me it's a fucking How have lot. your DMs changed? They've always been aggressive. Yeah. It's, it's, you, it's, yeah, it's mostly it's mostly gay dudes being very sexually aggressive. <laughs> I don't get the gay dudes being sexually aggressive towards me. Really? Yeah, I feel kind of left out now. It, yeah, you're not missing much. <laughs> it's always wild. <laughs> Honestly, a lot of it's like I'm like, oh, some of it's like sweet, and it's like, oh, people are are just like sliding into the DMs and shooting their shot. Yeah. Other times, it's like, whoa, oh mm-hmm. my god, I gotta I gotta report that one. <laughs> <laughs> Men are wild. Let's talk about this quad workout. You got these like, <laughs> you got these NFL linebacker I, legs. I, I didn't realize the the frame was going to be straight up my pants. I would have worn long pants. But. Well, we do have a little bit of a down angle. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, the it's good for views, Carter. It's good for look. You guys are trying to the boost to boost the views. Yeah. Let's go. I'll yeah. I'll take these pants yeah. off. Uh, what? The 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 quad work I I was in I was doing leg day yesterday so maybe there's some residual. So you are pump. you a gym rat or are you like I'm a bit of a gym rat. Do you go to like a fancy? Are you at no, Equinox? No, I go to a, I go to a shitty gym. I spend thirteen dollars a month. 
A 24 hour fitness. It's it's not even a 24 hour fitness. It's, it's like, called DC. I it's probably like Timu 24 hour fitness. <laughs> it's like a a uh, it's like a gym that's f- a five minute walk from my house. That's the best kind of gym. It's the best kind of gym, but it's like a Christian organization, which is like whatever, but also just a little bit strange for this gym. It's a it's a weird vibe in there. Interesting. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we'll have to check this out. Yeah. You know. Teach their own. It's. A, I mean, it has all the equipment. Everyone's very nice in there. As long well, as they got clean ta- a clean towel situation. They don't have clean towels. There's no towels. You they gotta don't bring have your any own towels. towels. I don't shower. B Y O T. B Y O T. It's it's a B Y O. It's a B Y O S situation. Yeah. Bring your own shower. I think that like people that shower at gyms are definitely in their own category. What do you guys think? Uh, in their own category, how? What's it's the like there are people that like just will not bring their stuff, like have that extra set of clothes, not even you're not going before work anyways. It's like it's like I don't know if it's a type A sort of thing, like or is it or if it's a type Z. So are they so are those people better or worse than the people that don't shower at gyms? It's hard. What do you got? That's what I was asking. Jimmy, you just you just you just go home sweaty on the subway when you're there. That's me. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? I, but is that better or worse? Like Here's my thing with the showering at gyms. At a weightlifting gym, I don't shower at the gym because I'm a five minute walk from my house. At my jujitsu gym, you have to shower at the place because you get just staph infections. Yeah. Deep All the mats. Yeah. Oh, and ringworm. Oh. I've had ringworm staph infection multiple times. No way. I've broken my nose. I've torn my LCL. Yeah. We have to talk about this jujitsu. Like what got you into that? I just love, I I'd started doing it when I lived in Nashville and it was like a, just something to get me out of the house. Um, and then, you know, I moved to Los Angeles. Now I go to, uh, kind of like the Mecca of, of jujitsu gyms here in Los Angeles. You're at Gracie? You no, at- I go to 10th planet. Oh, okay. Shit. Yeah. With it's Eddie Bravo's gym. Okay. I briefly um, worked in the UFC world. So, get the fuck out yeah, of here. Like really? Six years ago. Dude, that's awesome. What did you What did you do for it? Uh, there's a uh, um, a trainer, the guy who like a uh, nutritionist okay. named George Lockhart. Okay. And I worked for him as his videographer for oh. a little for like two you for two pay per views. It who, was just two. Who where, did you meet any like? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Athletes? So I who I worked with was uh, Anthony Pettis. Fuck, um, <laughs> that's sick, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, um, uh, Sergio Pettis, the both Pettis okay. brothers. Okay. Um, uh, who else? Uh, Joanna Jacek. Oh yeah. Uh, when she was still, in fact, Dude, I was with not, her. Not with the Zhang Wei Li fight. No, it was it was uh, Rose. It oh was, my it was god! The first I was thug, thug Rose. It was the first Thug oh. Rose at MS at uh, at Barclays Center. That's fucking. Yeah, that's how sick. long it was. I love. Uh, I love Rose Namajunas. Yeah. Uh, the, the, that uh, Wei Li fight. Yeah. Was so crazy. Yeah. I remember seeing that, and I uh, oh shit. It was, I showed my, it was one of the first fights I like introduced one of my friends to MMA and they were like, I don't know, it looks a little violent for me. <laughs> I showed, and it was that night and I was like, oh, come on, it's not going to be that bad. And like, of course the fucking nightmare injuries yeah. that came yeah, out of that yeah, one. Yeah. Oh my God. MMA so is violent though. Yeah. And that's why I think it can never be like as big as football or the NBA. Cause there's, yeah. a, there's, there's always going to be a segment of the population. You just don't like the, I don't like the violence when it starts getting, when, when someone opens a cut above their eye yeah. and they're just like, looks like, you know, it's like a Tarantino movie yeah, or something it's like I brutal. I can't do it. Yeah. But yeah, the reason I got into it was because of, uh, just finding something to do. And I'm, you know, I'm still like new at it. I've been doing it probably two years, which is like in the span of jujitsu, very, very early little. days. Yeah. Um, but I fucking love it. It's the best. What's your favorite like jujitsu? Like, what do you call it? I don't want to say, I want to say, how do I say it? Like submission or move? Yes. What's your favorite jujitsu move? That's a great question. I think the thing that I'm landing the Are most Are you a good right thrower? Now, Are you a good thrower? I have okay stand up. I have okay yeah. stand up. Yeah, I'm. 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 You're a ground guy. I I like it all. I think I'm. I'm lucky enough to be like a pretty big guy, so like that helps a lot in jujitsu. Yeah. Um, and like I'm very flexible. You like know, I can almost do. I can do full splits. And have shit. you? Are you? Are you considering doing a full on an actual fight? Not, oh, like with striking? Yeah. No, I have no interest in getting. Or even are you even grappling or? Well, I've competed in grappling. Okay. Yeah. Um, again, like. 
I'm two years in is still very early days yeah. in jujitsu, so well, it's not the like reason I'm a pro I the reason I suggest it is because you're tall, right? And I feel like with a weight cut, you could really like yeah. get in like you could do like I don't know you could what do you you're like at what maybe like two ten right now something like that very close I'm like two fifteen to two twenty yeah see I think you could get down to like one eighty. Yeah, I think if I was like doing a, I like how this is just not at all about mm. music. Yeah. Demi's um, like eyes are glazing over. Yeah, She's like, two. what? <laughs> uh, get two guys in a room and immediately goes mm. to like, okay, so like if you had to cut weight and like get into a fight, what would you get? Uh, Give us a little bit of like, uh, what's the theme? Like, what are we going for here? What's this? What's the album? So it's it's a hundred cowboys. It's a big old breakup record, to be totally honest with you. Wait, this is the one from a year ago, just to... Yep, the mustache got grown, the album got written all in the wake of being... Dumb. Gotta stay inspired, you know what I mean? Gotta stay inspired. And um, yeah, it was, uh, it was a lot of fun to make the record very cathartic. Uh, and, you know, I, I don't write a lot of sad songs. I don't think any of my songs are like super melancholy, um, but for me, having like sad lyrics over an upbeat song is the most fun thing. Um, and so a lot of these songs I think are kind of like summer bops, but then you like read the lyrics and it's like, oh, it's kind of dark. About him, it's about him getting really sad. Yeah. I was listening to Nashville, um, your single Nashville yeah. prep, you know, it gets me in the mood for, to interview someone. Hell yeah. And I was thinking it's kind of has like a lyrically kind of has like a John Prine oh, thing. Fuck yeah. Kind of That's like awesome. a little melancholy, but also like fun to sing along to. Right. Right. I, I appreciate that. I mean, John Prine is John. He's like one of the, one of the goats. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's, that's what a hundred cowboys is to me. Breakup record. Boom. Now I need to get dumped again for the, for me to write the next record. No. Is it, is it, how does your current, um, significant other feel about that? You're like releasing this breakup record. She hasn't said anything bad about it. I think she, she's very supportive. So yeah. I think if she was like, fuck this record, it would be a lot harder. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's not like, it's not like I'm, I'm assuming there's no songs where it's like, I want you back no, baby or no, something like no, that. That'd be no a, that'd be a, that'd be a call be for alarm. Yeah, yeah. Is there a song that almost didn't make the cut that did that we should all go and play first? Oh, no, you shouldn't play it first. <laughs> there's two songs that didn't make the cut or that, Almost didn't make the cut and maybe shouldn't. Because sometimes those are the ones like you hear artists saying, yeah, I almost didn't put that on the album. And it was it right. was the one that, you know, made the album. Uh, there's one song on it called Comet that was so much fun to produce and to make. Um, but isn't like, I don't think it's super marketable. So that one almost didn't make the cut because it's, I don't think it's like, it's that one's not really for the listener. It's more because I had a great time making it. Um, and all the songs were co-written or most of the songs were co-written with my friend Noah Tauscher, who's also my roommate. Um, but we had a great time making that song. And so we were like, fuck it. It's going on the record. The other one is, uh, Arizona, which is one of the singles, which I do think people should start with. That's like my, that's my favorite on the song, on the record. Um, we couldn't write anything that day and we were like, all right, fuck it. Let's just start recording something. And if so something eventually will come out. And so we wrote this whole song. And at the end of the day, we were like, this sucks. There's no way. And then we listened to it the following day and we were like, oh shit, actually that might be the best one. So Arizona is probably that. What do you um, do when you get writer's block? Like, what do you do? Uh, do you, you don't, do you get it? Do you get I, writer's block? I don't usually because I, I try to write something every day. Um, so I think the trick to like preventing writer's block is just never stop making. Even stuff. if you think it sucks. Even if you, yeah, if you think it sucks. How often do you scrap song ideas and you're like, this isn't I, as good as I thought it was. I never actively scrap it. I only, so I'll like make something and I might not finish it, but that's just because the next day I start making something else. I only, I only go back to things when I go, when it comes back into my head and I go, oh shit, I got to keep on working on that one. So it's like, there's nothing that gets actively scrapped. It's just the stuff that gets worked on again is the stuff that comes to mind. Do you mix and match, like use one guitar part and you're like, actually this guitar part would be better with th these lyrics or is Not everything really. kind of contained? Everything is self-contained in, in each project. I feel like writer's block happens when like, 
don't you feel like that's just a moment where you're like, okay, I need to live a little bit of life, whether that's a day or a week or a weekend, whatever, to yeah. grab some inspiration or to just feel something and then we'll be fine. This, this is not yeah. a sign. You just got to go live a little bit just for the day. Go and live. I think so. Yeah. If you don't have any input coming in, it's super hard to have any output. Um, I think I'm, I'm not good about having like about experiencing stuff. I think if, if I'm left to my own devices, I'll stay in my studio 24 seven and never fucking talk to anyone. Um, but my friends and my girlfriend and the people around me are really good about being like, Hey, let's go do fucking anything else. <laughs> yeah. And so they keep me having input. Do you, are you, do you get, do you get stuck in a zone ever with your own music where you're like seven hours past and you haven't even realized it? Stuck in the zone. Um, I get like, I need, I need a lot of breaks for me. I need like a sugar break. I need like a go call a friend break. Like I love, I love taking a break. That's like my thing for, for awesome. a few minutes and like getting back into like equilibrium. I think people talk a lot about doing 30 minutes on 10 minutes off. Or that sounds, 45, 15. That sounds like it'd be hard. But like some people swear by it. Like if it's, it's like almost, you know, you, you take 15 minutes off, not to like look at a phone or something, but just to like reset your, if you're looking at the computer the whole time, I feel like you can get really closed in, but then like go outside and just stare outside for 15 minutes. You come back, you feel a little bit better. You stare at, you just go outside and stare for. Sometimes if I'm, if I'm like deep in a session, I'll sometimes just go outside and like stand on my stoop and be like where the fuck i think it's on? more so yeah when you're like mixing or like you need to like use ears like hardcore you know what i mean yeah 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 just like regain some ob objectivity you and you, so you you uh you live with your songwriting partner and i'm assuming yep. that your guys are really good friends yeah we've we went to college together uh, and we lived together sophomore year to senior year um and is he jealous of your success no, he's super successful in his own right. He, he does a lot of songwriting for other people and producing for other people. Yeah, Noah Tauscher, and he's a fucking badass business guy and does a whole host of other things. He was doing the artist thing for a while, like when we were in college and immediately out of it. Um, but then at one point he was like, man, fuck this. I don't, I don't care about this enough. And yeah. he decided to just work on producing for other people, which he's incredible and... Uh, yeah, he has a whole. He has his hands in a bunch of different parts of the industry. Sounds it's like cool. you guys have made a good team. We do. You know what? There's not a lot of people I feel super comfortable telling everything to, but I do with him, which is nice. Aww. Yeah. So, but that's part of the artistic process, right? Like finding what you're good at and what you like most. Yeah. You try, you try everything, and then you figure that out. Absolutely. And like, it's seeing what you're drawn to. It's seeing which parts of the process feel the most natural to you. And then, you know, you find people to do the parts that don't feel natural. You have this big, do you have like this pretty elaborate home studio set up? Mm -hmm. you, you do these videos, you know, where you, you, you isolate the parts you show how a song was built. Um, are you constantly kind of um, rotating gear or do you have like, you buy specific things, you keep them forever? I'm a, I'm kind of a keep it forever type. Yeah. I don't really rotate gear. If something is working for me, it just stays in. And when something isn't working for me, it slowly disappears. Do you have any analog synths like real? Legit I have a analog? Juno 106, oh, nice. which is an analog. Actually, no, it's, it's a vintage synth, but it's, I believe it's actually digital. Okay. Um, so not really, but I'm, I'm pretty familiar with that kind of counts though. Yeah. It's like in the same world. Yeah. It is like a hardware synth, but it's yeah. not technically, I don't know. Um, it's not, there's a lot of digital elements to it. But like when I was in college, I worked just about full time as a studio repair guy for someone in Miami. So like I used to be, I, I, I thought I was going to be an electrical Wait, what school did you go to? University of Miami. I, that's where I went. No fucking way. Yeah. Holy shit. When did you graduate? Way before you did. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did, what did you study? Uh, um, uh, motion pictures, film. Okay. School of communications. And I was a uh, creative writing was my uh, second major. What, uh, do you remember what dorm you were in as a freshman? Eaton. Eaton. Carter, do you like party on the weekends? Like what's your, what's your vibe outside of music? I care about like very few things. Like I care deeply about like a couple things. It's like, I'll do exercise stuff, including jujitsu and making birdhouses. 
I love birdhouses. <laughs> Can you imagine? That'd be yeah. sick if you just guessed that right. <laughs> yeah, actually. Uh, yeah, I do like a lot of like exercise. I do a lot. I make a lot of music. And then that's, that's I feel it. like between the gym, um, BJJ and um, making music, like you wouldn't have time for anything yeah. other than like eating and watching um, old episodes of Law and Order and building birdhouses and building birdhouses while dun, you dun. watch <laughs> while you watch Law and Order yeah. episodes. I'm not, but I'm not a big partier. I, in fact, I, I like I drinking now for me. I'm like every time I, I'll have one like glass of wine and I'm so hungover the next day. Terrible. Is that your drink of choice, glass of wine? I don't even know what my drink of choice. I guess like I'm kind of a, a hard seltzer person if I if I am gonna be partying. Okay. It's funny we just had like a seltzer versus flat water breakdown on an, our last show. So oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we were talking about how um, f- seltzer is good when you're drinking it with a meal, but if you're really thirsty. It's like yeah. doesn't really do the trick. No, it's too fancy to actually quench thirst. And Demi will only do hard seltzer. Like to her, it's like a waste of liquid if it's a seltzer with no alcohol in it. Champagne or four loco, and that's the only way I'll take bubbles. I think. You're a four loco person. I'm a four loco person, but there's no caffeine in the new four loco, by the way. Just, just so everyone knows. So confession. Let me ask you: Do you are, do you do you go to Erewhon? No. What? Okay. No mm-hmm. fucking way! Do you think I'm no? Well, just because you just because you live here. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm no, I I don't. I go to Trader Joe's when I'm feeling like I can get there, and Target when when I'm trying to be fast. I do Shout that. Shout out Target grocery delivery. You do? Yeah. Oh. It's because are you anti Amazon? Is that? I'm, it? No, I'm, I use Amazon all the time, but just the delivery aspect of it. I mean, it's great. Oh, because I'm lazy? Is that it? Or like? I think it's, yeah. I think oh. that's why. <laughs> That's I would fair. love to. I think is it, does it cost money to have it delivered? So it they have this trick that they do because they're right. Amazon. So there's a delivery fee that's like six or seven dollars, but there's no tax. So they like basically transfer the tax to the delivery. No fee tax on buying? on the groceries. So when you look at your what? invoice, it'll be like tax. It'll be like twenty cents on eighty dollars worth of groceries, but then the delivery fee will it'll stay like seven dollar service fee. So it's no more. So expensive. it's some sort of weird tax or some sort of weird accounting thing they do. So you think you're spending roughly the same amount of it's money? It's the same amount of money. Get yeah. the f- why am I not doing that then? That's insane. Yeah, and they deliver up until midnight. So if I'm like Fuck. seven p.m., I need some groceries but it's like weird they're they're like their selection is really weird um but the reason i brought up air one because because demi's drinking a fancy santa barbara green drink are you drinking are you an air one person no she's not she's not but she's like she likes i don't even know what air one is you guys honestly it's like bougie it's where like jared leto would get a smoothie from yeah yeah i don't really normally do groceries like i kind of just get when I'm hungry, I just buy, I just eat something, you know, like I have to find it. But where do the, where, where does the food where come, does it from? come from? <laughs> I go, I don't know. A lot of, there's Uber I Eats, there's, there's, you know. Do you, I, so I, I totally relate. I've been in modes when I was in New York. Uh, Demi and I know each other from New York. Um, where I wouldn't get groceries. I would just, whenever I was hungry, I was like a block from a bodega and I would just oh, get yeah. a sandwich. No, that's the New York city way. But you got the cal, you got what, like a 4,000 a day calorie diet or something. But I have no idea. I've never measured it. My, my typical like dinner is, is, is like a pound of ground beef <laughs> and then it's disgusting. <laughs> and then like, I'll do a dry, a cup of rice. And then, so however much rice that turns into, and then kale and a can of black beans. And it's, every, every night? Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. And I wake up Could and you... I shit my pants. <laughs> yeah. No, but you need to keep on that weight because if you're burning so much calories, then like... I I am a big caffeine head. Like, it sounds like you yeah. are as well. Like, Emma. after after we get done here, I made a cup of coffee before you got here that I never drank. It's mm. on the counter in the so kitchen. You're gonna... That's impossible for me. How, how much caffeine do you think you're drinking a day, Demi? Well, it's the first thing in the morning, right? Like, I look forward to it. The moment I oh, wake yeah. up, I'm like, oh my God, I can't wait for this coffee. Like, yeah, I can't have it just sit there. Like, you know what I mean? Like, Jordan, I can't believe you. That's cool. But yeah, probably like three at least for me a day. I've had one today, but my second cup was what I was going to drink when Carter got here. Jordan yeah. makes a good cup of coffee, by the way, I will say. A good cup of coffee? Uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm, I have a good ratio. I'm a good egg ratio. Oh, okay. And I'm good at both instant and brewed. 
Interesting. Yeah. How can you be good at instant coffee? Knowing how much to put in there and how much cream to cut it so it's not instant tasting. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because most like co- uh, coffee desserts, like any kind of chocolate coffee, Is whatever, instant? it's instant. Like if you look at the ingredients on like coffee ice cream, they use yeah. instant coffee. That makes sense. Yeah. Hmm. And outside of the U.S., instant coffee is very popular. Uh, yeah, yeah. But it, n- not in the U.S. Everyone's coffee snobs here. In, in yeah. The, yeah. In, um, I was just recently in Japan, and they do so many caffeine drinks, but they're all – like they don't I, – I, I didn't see a lot of like cafes where they'd like be brewing it actively. Yeah. It was a lot of just like vending machine coffee. Were you in Tokyo? Yeah. See, that's my dream. On dating apps, when like there's like the question like, what's your dream vacation? I'm like, fucking Tokyo. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It was fucking unbelievable. But I want to go with someone who at least is experienced in that world. Really? Did you go by yourself? Or I went your with my, me and my girlfriend went and neither of us knew like anything about it. I mean, she did a little research beforehand, but <laughs> we don't like speak the language right now. She was like looking up Japan on Wikipedia yeah, she's on like, the well, way over there. <laughs> she's like, it's like, all right, Japan so, country question mark. <laughs> so it looks like their uh, chief exports are <laughs> <laughs> their GDP. Yeah, um, and it was amazing. Dimmy, have here. you ever been to Tokyo for any of your model? Yeah, what? Like they do like special deals with like Tokyo that girls will get like a flat rate for a certain amount of time. But I didn't. I didn't go. It's the kind of thing where you like got to go over there for like a uh, extended period of time and you stay like in a model apartment. And yeah. Just... And they'll give you a guarantee. And then if you make above that, then you, you get more than that. But if you, it just like girls love going to Tokyo though. Oh yeah. Really? Yeah. They love Tokyo. Demi's uh Demi doesn't talk about it that much on the show, but she's a fashion model. Oh, cool. Fashion. Oh my God. Yeah. Do you like doing it? Yeah. It's like, it's like, you know, it's a job. It's, she was in a a, a, a L'Oreal uh, hair color ad a while back. Get the fuck that out was of here. in like That's that sick. was one of those that was on the everyone's feed. Like when you like did the ads up when you were scrolling, it was like the one that always showed up. You yeah. Know? Like two million views on that sucker. That's and sick. She did, she did the great like hair turn bounce like the like yeah. How long did that L'Oreal hair color shoot? How long did it last? How long were you there? They went overtime a few hours. It turned out to be like maybe eleven hour day, but. And, and how much of it was actually shooting the commercial? Less than an hour in total. What's the rest of the time? Just hair, makeup, like... Fuck off. Them doing, like, mixing the set around and finding the light, like... So, do you, like, sleep when you're on set like that? Not that day. Like, does it pay super well? It's okay. It depends. I think L'Oreal, yeah, that was one of my... One of the the better paying jobs I've had. Does the the bigger the company, the bigger the paycheck, or is it not that... Um, the more commercial the company. So like L'Oreal is more commercial, but like when I shot Vogue, like I had, for instance, just like the same, it was like a regular rate, but you get more exposure, I guess, through. I do a lot of like branding stuff and I'm always surprised by which companies pay super well and which companies pay fucking terribly. Like I've had big, big companies reach out and be like, we'll give you $250 <laughs> to do this. And I'm like, fuck off. Like, absolutely not. And then like some small companies will be like, do you want 30 K? Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. What's, what's, uh, what's the best free thing that you've gotten through I, your, I get, a, I've gotten, a, a quite a few free guitars, free guitars. Yeah. That's awesome. That's always exciting. I, I honestly don't really buy music equipment anymore because oh, yeah, I get, there's no I reason get sent to. a lot of are stuff. Are you like, are you sponsored by like anybody? Um, you got that Ernie ball? Going no, on? no, I don't. Mm. Uh, I don't have, any official sponsors, but like there's a bit of a handshake deal of like if they used to get sent stuff, like I do a bunch of stuff for universal audio. Um, so I get like interfaces and, and microphones and all that kind of shit. Okay. So it's more like pro audio, a lot nerd, of pro nerd audio stuff. Yeah. nerd stuff. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You don't get like Fender sending you like the, like you, got, you don't have like a Fender, like signature Carter Vale. Guitar. No, but I mean, Fender se- sends me guitars, okay. but not like they don't send me Carter Vale guitars. <laughs> <laughs> I think that requires, uh, a little bit more, uh, uh, more something, <laughs> more juice, yeah. more juice. So more, are more you more grease in the engine? So because you're not a Fender, do you do you have multiple brands? You're not yeah, like, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Just a, well, could you like be a touring guitarist? Like if some not for someone no, else. Like so. I wouldn't be ripping solos, you know. Yeah. Um, but I'm really good at what I do. You know, like I I can play all instruments okay and then when i'm playing guitar live i'm I'm good i'm solid i love those eddie van halen videos from the 80s where he's like just like going up and down the neck and he's looking at the camera like isn't this crazy that i'm doing this he's like yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. looking at the camera like grinning really i don't, big. I don't yeah. I, like that kind of music just doesn't do anything for me yeah i wish it did but. we already you already were like earlier you were talking shit about slap bass you were yeah, like i just can't do slap bass. bass how do you feel about slap bass Jimmy? 
So it's like the same as how I feel about like solo guitar, like kind of moments where it's just, I don't know. You said you also are producing your own music now, right? I started dabbling with Ableton like a few months ago. Why'd you pick Ableton? Prior to that, it was like uh, Logic. So I was just tracking vocals with Logic, right? But Ableton, I've realized like in so little time, I picked up like just the gist of it. Like I can do things like it's just made for production. So cool. that's what I've heard. And it's so true. What do you yeah. use? I use Logic. I have a bunch of friends that use Ableton and they've tried you to, to switch. Yeah, the way you asked why she uses Ableton was kind of accusatory. You were yeah. like, you please try it. Just try the switch. I here's my thing though. I'm like I'm like really fucking good at logic. <sighs> I'm, I'm, I'm fast as fuck on logic. And I've been like, yeah, I've been making records on it for so long. The idea of like going to a program where I, I'm not fast on, like so much of the my creativity is coming from the fact that I don't need to think about any of the stuff that I'm doing on the computer. There's no technical that makes sense. Then I think that's a reason to stick with it then, honestly. Yeah. But I have a friend that went from Logic to Ableton and they love it. Um, it's just, I don't, I, yeah, I don't have it. So you weren't in the comm school, were you? I was in the Frost? music school. You were Frost. in the Frost, yeah. yeah. That's so cool. Wait, you went to music school? Yeah, I, was, I, went to, I went to school for audio engineering, but it was like heavily electrical engineering. So I thought I was just going to do electrical afterwards. Um, and then I hated it. I hated electrical engineering so much. I worked for a pedal manufacturing company and was just soldering all day. And I did it for two weeks. You and didn't I was get like, to, did you ever, have you ever designed your own pedal? In college I did, yeah. Yeah. And it was fun. And like, What, what did it sound like? shit <laughs> uh but then in like college i was like repairing like really like recording consoles and like doing like deep repair stuff and i loved it then and then as soon as i got out of college i was like i can't do this this sucks yeah and you don't want to be one of those like and and we need them we need them yeah bad. Yeah, yeah you just don't want but, to be one <laughs> but you don't want to be like, the guy in the back dusty room no. at the. and know. that's what i was in college for like two two years i did that for this like kind of well-known producer in miami and it was do you ever think, man, like being a DJ looks like a really nice life? Maybe I should do that. Are are you, are either of you DJs? No. Mm -mm. no. No. Yeah. No. Fuck DJ. Respect if you're a DJ and producer, by the way. Not. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like not all DJs, but just. But if you're like I DJ, I'm like, okay. Yeah. What <laughs> you does that make mean? playlists. I DJ on my playlist. So your your girlfriend's not a musician. No. She's a really talented visual artist. Oh, like, does she do incredible. your uh, cover? She did stuff? the cover art. She Sweet. does most of my. You have photos. like a whole like you have like a like a studio in your ha house with the people that you know. Yeah, like that you have a producer and an art director. Yeah. in your thing. Well, I don't live with my girlfriend, but she is very cool. And yeah, she's like over. You know, she's she's. I like do everyone that's like involved in the art. I need to be my friend as well. Yeah. Like I don't, I, I don't like being like, oh, we'll hire someone to do that. Like I'd prefer to hire my friends. Yeah. So that makes it as easier. As long as they're good at what they're supposed to do. And I, I think I am really good at selecting friends that are really good at what they do. So thank you for coming by, Carter. I had so much fun. It was so great to meet y'all. Yeah. And your socials are just at Carter Vale or? Carter Vale Music. Carter, Carter Vale Music on everything. Oh, that's nice. Except Spotify, which is just Carter Vale. Yeah, sure, sure. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you later.